Welcome back to the Dope Dad Network, guys, where I'm your host, Deuce the Dope Dad. And this is a channel where we do dope dad stuff. Stuff. I gotta say stuff because because my son is in the back right now. Hey, say what's up, man. What's up, man? <laughs> and so I didn't mind Ace tagging along because Ace was actually with me um, when I first saw. Yeah, you were with me. Yeah, the entire family was me, with me, actually, when we first uh, stumbled upon our first property. And so we're going to walk you guys step by step how we were able to do our first real estate wholesale deal in under 30 days. Actually, it was a little over 30 days um, when we finally got everything uh, officially completed. But I'm going to go back over to that neighborhood right now. And as I'm walking you guys through what we did out of the gate, I'm gonna see if there's any more properties over there that we may have missed when I was driving through, when I did a, a drive through the first time. And so that brings me to my first point. Um, I'm gonna just rewind real quick and kind of give you guys like the backstory on how we got involved with real estate. My wife and I actually, we, we, we wanted to do real estate for so long, but didn't really know what avenue or, or you know what route we were going to take to kind of you know dive in you want to you know we want to do the the whole fix and flip and buy a whole thing but you know i'm not gonna lie to y'all we were a little timid you know about the 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 upfront capital you know that it was going to take to to start uh flipping and holding and uh, doing airbnbs and stuff like that and so i had a good friend of mine that i knew that has done really well uh, in real estate over the past few years. I just reached out, you know, I wasn't too proud to reach out. I just reached out and said, hey, you know, how did you do it? And so she didn't she didn't talk over my head with complex lingo and overcomplicate things. So a lot of times when we get too much information, we get analysis over paralysis. And so that's what didn't happen. It was on a Sunday, I contacted her on a Sunday and uh, we talked a little minute. She said, hey, look, over the next week, I want you to go out and I want you to find 10 distressed properties. I said, distress, what do, what do you mean by distressed properties? And so she basically said, hey, you know, you pass by a house, you see the roof, like a, look, look like the house need a new roof, or, you know, you see that the grass is growing up, or you see that it's just, it's just that, that house in the neighborhood where it's like, it's the ugly duckling. Um, and she said, I just want you to write those addresses down, write those addresses down. And we're gonna we're gonna track down the owners and we're just gonna contact them and just ask them do they want to sell and so when she said it like that i was like man anybody can do that and so it, this was on the sunday mind you i think maybe we talked around 3 p.m and when i hung up that phone it was you know maybe we talked 30 minutes i don't know um but let's say it was 30 it was it was 3 30 uh when we hung up and I was like, you know what? I sat on the couch for a little minute. I was like, you know what? Instead of me going and trying to find 10 distressed properties in a week, I'm about to do it right now. It was a Sunday. It was still a little daylight left. Probably had, you know, two, three, four, two, two or three hours left as far as daylight. So I was like, why not? So I threw the family in the car and I just said, hey, let's go. And to be honest with y'all, I don't, I have no idea why we went to the community that we went to. I was just like, hey, I'm gonna go to my old neighborhood and just, I don't know, kind of look around and this would be an opportunity to kind of let the kids know like what daddy come from, what daddy childhood was like and stuff like that. And so we went by the old neighborhood yeah. and as we were approaching the neighborhood, I could see my old house, my childhood home from a distance. And I was like, hold on one second, y'all. Excuse me. Here you go. Here you go. All right. God you have a God bless, man. Um, so, uh, what was oh yeah, so Anyway, I approached my childhood home and my childhood home looked like a distressed property. It was actually some, it was actually had fire damage. And I was like, oh man, like she said distress, but I don't know if like does, does fire damage like count as distress? Is that my wife behind me? 
Oh. No, that's not her. That looks like my wife car behind me. But um, it was fire damage or whatever. And so I was like, well, I mean, this is bad. You know, so I wrote the address down and I went throughout the neighborhood and I saw that, man, they were, it was some new construction bills about two houses down as I continued driving. I was like, yo, wow, they, okay, like, um, they building over here. And so I looked at one of them, I got out and looked at, like they had like a, I don't know, like a board out there uh, staked in the ground and basically talking about the project, what they were doing. So I went online and I found out that they were investing $25 million um, into that community. Uh, with building new homes, affordable homes, and stuff like that. And I was like, wow. Like, the area where these homes were going to get built, when I was growing up, they were like they were, they were like apartments, you know? Um, may maybe low-income apartments or something like that. And so I saw all those apartments knocked down, and, you know, they had already built a few homes. And I went online and saw some of them homes were going for over $200,000. And I'm like, man, there's no way. Look, there's one right there. I gotta get that one on the way back. So I've already found two, two addresses that we're gonna get when we, when we head back out of this neighborhood. And so I saw that the homes were going for some of them over $200,000 and I was like, wow houses I know for a fact weren't going for this much on this street 20 years ago. And so I was like, man, this might be, this might mess around and be a gold mine right here. And so wrote the address down. We took down maybe 10. No, no, we didn't. We took down maybe 20 addresses. I think we were out driving uh, for about two hours driving for dollars i didn't even know what that term was at that particular time all i knew was i'm looking for homes that were in decent neighborhoods not war zones but like decent neighborhoods uh that needed some work and so we just writing those addresses down later on we found out that the real estate term for what we were doing uh was driving for dollars all right y'all so we actually pulling up on the street now the neighborhood so I'm going to look see what's going on oh oh look like they already started oh wow hold on y'all check this out wow that was our first deal right there now check this out check this out new construction bills right here come on man Come on, man. That was nothing but God. New construction right here. And I know they're gonna put some right there as well. Uh, as you can see, some of these homes right here are already completed. Um, and as I stated, a lot of these are going for the, in the low 200,000, mid 200,000. Wow. Look at that. All right, guys, I had to just pause for a moment and take some addresses down. <laughs> Man, we, we rolled through here and I don't know if these were distressed the first time we looked. It's a couple of houses that, that we missed last time, definitely. Um, but I took some addresses down and, you know, hopefully we could go ahead and strike another deal over here. I may just... Oh wow, that, that one was just remodeled. That one was just remodeled right there. Mind y'all, I'm not just looking at, I'm not just looking at tall grass. You know, that's, I mean, that's the first sign. That's what piques my interest. But I'm just also just looking at little things like trash all over the place. I mean, just signs of vacancy. Like you, you can just tell when like, you, you know, when somebody just junky, and you know when some, like there's no way somebody's living in that, you know. And those are the homes that I was basically looking for. And so I took down those addresses. Long story short, we found uh, the owners out of the first ten phone calls we made. Three, we end up getting three contracts. We end up getting 
three contracts signed out of the first 10 phone calls that we made. Actually, the first phone call we made uh, was an older lady that uh, we saw the home and come to find out she actually still lived in the home. She wasn't looking to sell the property. But what ended up happening was we ended up asking her, hey, do you have any other properties that you may want to sell any land or any homes that you want to sell? And she was like, actually, I have a couple lots that I want to get rid of. And so I went down and, you know, looked at the lots and, you know, they were in a pretty decent area as well. So we were able to get those on the contract. And the next phone call that we made, that person didn't respond. Next two phone calls didn't respond. Then I finally decided, hey, you know, let me call this person that, that owns the childhood, my childhood home. And so uh, we ended up calling him and he said, man, there's tons of people that's been trying to buy the property. I said, uh, sir, I actually used to live in this house here. I understand there's tons of people hitting you up, but it would mean the world to me if you just heard me out. He was open to hearing me out. Um, and we just built a lot of rapport. We built tons of rapport. And so uh, he ended up, you know, deciding to assign the home to me, you know, giving me the rights to, to, to sell the home. So that was our first deal. During that process, I had a ton, I had a ton of people that was reaching out about it. I was putting it all, all over the, yeah, 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 you good. I was putting it all over the little Facebook groups. I was putting it on Marketplace. Uh, I didn't put it on Craigslist or anything like that, but I was just blasting it all over Facebook. What ended up happening was uh, my friend she saw the she saw the property, looked at the area, and come to find out she had shared an article on Facebook a year before, maybe like six months before this particular time that I got that house on the contract. She shared the article about about that particular area having that contract with the city for that $25 million to build those new homes on the, on the same street or whatever. And so when she found out that this was the street that all this was going down and just understanding that the value of that area was continuing to go up, she was like, hey, you don't have to contact anybody else about this. I'll buy the, I'll buy the house. And so she ended up buy, she ended up buying the house. We went to drive for dollars. We kept it simple. We wrote down a few addresses. We contacted the owners. We didn't have any type of system or anything. We basically just found the phone numbers, any possible number that we could find, any possible email addresses or anything that we could find about the owner. And we just hit the ground running, just taking action. And I feel like that's more important than any of the other stuff that you can go watch on YouTube. Because, you know, people talk about these different CRM systems and these text blasts and all of that. In the beginning, you don't have any of that stuff. You know, you don't, you're not aware, you don't even know how to do any of that stuff. And I wouldn't even waste any time or spend any time before you, you get your first deal trying to figure out all of that stuff. Get some money in your pocket first. Get your first belief check. Then start taking on and learning all the other like complex and advanced stuff. You know, so that's what we cared about in the beginning. We only cared about striking that first deal, getting that first deal, getting some experience under our belt. And when it boiled down to it, what I've learned, the holy grail of this business, the most beautiful part of the business to me is doing the driving. I actually enjoy the driving around. Now, I know gas is what gas is right now. I get, so I get that. But to be honest, me and my family, we love on a Sunday, on a weekend or something like that, going around, you know, putting up some signs and finding some addresses and writing them down. You know, the kids back there, they give us entertainment. My wife is typically up here as my co-pilot. You know, she has the iPad and she's, you know, jotting down the addresses. Sometimes I'll go ahead and I'll try to contact the owner while we're driving. And so my wife, she'll go pull up Skip Trace Genie you know, I just gave y'all a nugget right there that a lot of uh, that a lot of these people on YouTube they won't tell you where they actually finding these owners information at. You know, so uh, but 
Skip, skip Trace Genie. I pay about $58 for that a month. I mean, it's the cost of doing business. But one deal will take care of a lifetime membership of paying for that monthly or whatever. Uh, but so if you know that you're going to get deals, if you just if you just trying to get deals here and there, maybe one deal a month or, you know, you kind of playing around with it. You know, I would probably suggest going, finding a free website, you know, doing free people search or something like that. Now, I know what some of y'all will probably say, well, hey, you had a, you, your friend bought the property, so that don't count. You didn't really have to, you didn't really go find a buyer. Well, actually, I did have a few buyers that were interested in buying the property, but I decided to keep it in house. So that's what actually happened. Uh, I had a few, few buyers come out to look at it. I had a couple offers on it. Um, out of the three that came to look, two made offers. Signed a contract with the buyer for $17,000. 17, and the highest offer I got before my friend decided, hey, let me just go ahead and get it, was twenty two five, I think. twenty Or was it twenty three? It was either twenty two five, twenty two thousand five hundred dollars $22,500, or 23000 And, you know, she stepped in and said, hey, I do twenty five. It was nothing else to think about you know i was like okay cool let's go ahead let's go ahead and let's do it you know and so that's how that's how my first deal went and i would just tell you guys man don't worry about all the complex stuff in the beginning don't don't get overwhelmed with all the crazy stuff hey we all live in different areas different markets we're all in different markets so different markets behave in different ways and so Whereas I was calling um, these owners, hey, you may have to email, you may have to text. Text may work best for you. Different things work for different people. You know, different things work for different markets. So it's just your job as a real estate entrepreneur to figure out what works for you. Just put your foot to the pedal uh, and keep your foot on the gas, you know, when you find out what works. And so I hope this video provided a little insight. If y'all got any questions, about anything that I experienced along the way. If y'all got any questions at all about the deal, just drop a note in the comment section. I'll do my best to answer any questions and help out in any way. By no way, I'm not saying I'm a guru at all because I'm only about three, four months into this thing, uh, but I have seen some things. And for a new person that don't know anything, I can help you with your first 90 days, getting three contracts within the first month, you know, I think, I thought it was pretty good, you know, so, um, but anyway, y'all see AC, he, he, I didn't put him to sleep, hope I didn't do the same for y'all, it's Deuce the Dope Dad, it's Ace the cool kid, I guess, you know, we'll see y'all in the next video.